Welcome to Golden Software's video training for Surfer. Surfer is a versatile gridding, contouring, and surface mapping software package. In this video, I will cover how to create and edit 3D surface maps. 3D surface maps are three-dimensional shaded renderings of a grid file. A 3D surface map can be produced from any grid file. A grid file can be created directly in Surfer from XYZ data, can be generated in a third-party software program, or can be downloaded from the internet. To create a 3D surface map from a grid file, click Home, New Map, 3D Maps, Surface. Select the grid file and click Open. The 3D surface map is created with the default properties. To edit the properties of this map layer, select the 3D surface layer in the Contents window. All of the properties for the 3D surface layer are displayed in the Properties window. Changing any of the properties in the Properties window will automatically update the map. The General page contains many generic options. In the General section, next to the file name in the Grid File field, you can click the Open Grid button. To change or reload the grid file used to create the surface, you can click the Save Grid button to save the grid out to a new grid file and you can click the Grid Info button to generate a grid information report about the grid file. Check the box next to Show Color Scale to add a color scale to the right side of your map. You can click and drag the color scale to move it, and you can edit its properties in the Properties window. If you have other layers in your map, you can show them by checking the Show Layers box. For example, say we downloaded an aerial photograph of the area. Since the map is already selected, we'll click Home, Add to Map, Layer, Base, choose our image file, and click Open. The base layer is added to the map, as can be seen in the Plot window and the Contents window. If we uncheck the Show Layers checkbox, we no longer see this layer in the Plot window. The surface color is fully controlled by the fields in the Material Color section. You can set the upper surface color by clicking on the existing color map to specify one from the list of presets. Or you can click the Custom Color Map button to open the Color Map Editor where you can define a custom color map. If your grid file contains any nodes with no data values, you can choose how to display them in the No Data section. You can choose not to have Surfer draw the nodes with no data values, so they will not be shown on the surface. Or, you can remap the Z value of the nodes with no data values to a custom Z value. Notice that when we choose this option, the nodes with no data values are now shown on the edges of the map. By default, this new Z value is the grid minimum, but you can change it to whatever you like by typing a new value into the Remap Value box. In the Base section, Check the box next to Show Base to draw a base between the surface and the map base, and then change the Line and Fill properties of the base in the Line Properties and Fill Properties section. Adding a base is useful if you are overlaying multiple surface maps to create a block diagram. On the Mesh page, you can add mesh lines to the 3D surface map to emulate a wireframe. You can check the box next to Draw Lines in the Lines of Constant X, and Lines of Constant Y sections to draw the mesh lines in the X and Y directions. You can update your mesh to be more or less dense by changing the frequency. For example, if we wanted to show every line in the Y direction and every other line in the X direction, in the Lines of Constant Y section we would set the frequency to 1, and in the Lines of Constant X section we would set the frequency to 2. You can specify line properties for the X and Y directions independently of one another in the Line Properties section. If you have two or more 3D surface layers in your map displaying mesh lines, you can set the Surface Offset so the mesh lines do not interfere with one another. The Lighting page is where you control the lighting properties for the layer. You can change the horizontal and vertical light position angles by clicking and dragging the slide bar, or by clicking on the number itself and typing a new value. These angles must be between 0 to 360 degrees. You can also change the light colors by clicking on the current ambient, diffuse, or specular color and choosing a new color from the drop-down list. 
or by clicking the Custom Colors button next to the current color to open the Colors dialog, where you can choose from a larger selection of colors. The Overlays page is where you control how your 3D surface layer is displayed if other layers are present in the map. We'll go ahead and turn on the Show Layers option on the General page so we can see what these options control. When you drape other layers on top of the surface map, the overlay is converted to a raster image and then stretched over the 3D surface. When the overlays are stretched, the colors in the original overlay must be resampled to a new size and position. The resampling method specifies how the overlay is resampled. In most cases, linear is the best option. You also have the option to specify the resolution of the overlay. The maximum resolution is 4096 pixels. So if you are overlaying a high resolution image on a 3D surface map, it will be resampled to have 4096 pixels or fewer. If your video card does not meet surface requirements, 1024 pixels might be the maximum resolution you can achieve. Again, in most cases, the default is the best option. The last field, Color Modulation, gives you control over how the overlay and surface colors are displayed on the 3D surface. You can choose to display the surface color only so you do not see the overlays. You can choose to use the overlay colors only so you only see the overlays. Or you can choose to blend the surface map and overlaid mapped layers together. The Info page displays information about the selected object. For objects in a base map, this information could include length or area measurements or attribute information. But for 3D surface maps, there usually isn't any information to display here. You can change the orientation of the map in two ways. The first is to select the map in the Contents window and change the View setting on the View page in the Properties window. Alternatively, you can interactively change the orientation by using the trackball. With the 3D surface map layer still selected, click Map Tools, Trackball. Click on the map and drag it in the direction you wish to rotate the map. A blue bounding box will appear to show the outline of the map and will change orientation as you drag the mouse. The bounding box will be replaced with the new orientation of the surface map after the mouse button is released. You can repeat the trackball orientation as many times as you wish. To stop using the trackball tool, either press the Escape key on your keyboard, click the trackball command again, or click Home, Selection, Select. This concludes the video training for creating and editing 3D surface maps in Surfer. If you have any additional questions, please contact Golden Software.